Welcome back guys, I am back with module number two. The second video in this module is gonna be operators. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Python operators, everything from plus, minus, subtract, divide into some more complicated operators like plus equals, modulus, and a bunch of more operators that we're gonna get into today. So stay along for the ride. Alrighty guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Python operators. Let's do it. Agenda for today, we're gonna to go over most of the operators inside of Python, at least the ones that we're gonna be using in this bootcamp and that you should be using in your beginner journey in Python. We're gonna cover everything from arithmetic operators to comparative operators to logical operators and more. This lecture will be about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, a little bit shorter uh, today. I put a meme up because it talks about another language called JavaScript and shows how difficult it is to interpret. But don't worry, Python's a little bit easier to understand than JavaScript. So let's get into it. Hands on, we're gonna be using Windows as always. We'll be working in our Jupyter Notebooks. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to email me at Matthew, N-G-U-Y-E, 2023, at fau.edu. Nice little rhyme to that. So what are the operators in Python? What are they? I'm talking about operators. You're thinking maybe an operator to a forklift, but no, they're just expressions or special characters that perform specific operations on one or more variables, numbers, strings, etc., and they produce a specific result. So they're essential to every part of programming languages, to everything in programming. Uh, they allow you to manipulate data and really they're a fundamental to writing code. So you might have seen us do some addition, some string concatenation and whatnot in some of the earlier lectures. Now we're gonna explain how to actually do these and why they work. Alrighty, so things to remember guys, make sure you remember PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, it's just a good way to remember this. So remember, Python goes by PEMDAS, so anything in parentheses is gonna go first, then anything that are exponents or to the power of, then multiplication and division from the left hand to the right hand, and then addition and then subtraction left to right. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the arithmetic operators on the screen here. We have plus, which means addition. Now, when you're doing strings, that's different. When you have two strings and you're using the plus operator, you're actually pushing them together. So if I have a string that says Matthew and I have a string that says win, if I do uh, Matthew win in strings, it's just gonna uh, print out Matthew win without a space. So just be careful there. But when we're talking about numbers, we use addition sign for plus, obviously, subtraction for minus, multiplication, we use the star symbol, division, we use the slash, modulus, which essentially what modulus is, it's the remainder operator. So the remainder operator gives you the remainder of a number divided by another number. So if we do 10 modulus two, we're gonna get back zero since two divides by 10 equally into five. But if we do two, divide, two modulus 11, then we'll get a remainder of one because two fits into 11 five times with a remainder of one. Think back third, fourth grade math. It doesn't seem very useful now, but I'll show you guys how it might be useful and how you might apply it in Python. So let's get into the next one and that's exponen exponentiation, which is two star signs. That means the power of and lastly, it's gonna be the floor operator, which makes a division of two numbers, and it gives you the rounded down version of that number. Now, there is no built-in ceiling inside of Python, but you can import a library called math and use the math.seal, but we'll get into importing libraries later in this course. Just know that double slashes means floor division, so three divided by 10 will equal three, not 3.33333. It will always round down in that case. Alrighty guys, let's hop into our Jupyter Notebook and take a look at some examples here. Alrighty, so again, let's, let's go over the order of operations. So in this statement, we have two plus three times four. We're gonna be multiplying the three and the four first. It's basic algebra here. Um, so just know, uh, remember multiplication and division comes before addition, so these will be operated first. So we'll get 12 and 12 plus two equals 14. Um, let's check the output once we get through all these. Now we're looking at the same expression except the parentheses are now in front of the two and the three. So remember, 
parentheses comes first and then comes exponents, then division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So we'll actually add the two and the three here. That will give us five and we'll multiply it by four and that will give us 20. Now the result uh, for number three, the third one, two plus three exponent two, in this case, exponentiation or to the power of will go first. So three to the power of two is nine. We add that by two, that gives us 11. The last one is two plus three to the power of two. Now this case, this is in the parentheses. So the parentheses again, will go first. We'll get five, five to the power of two is 25. Let's run this, make sure all is good. And there we go. Alrighty, so let's take a look at our different arithmetic operators here. Let's take a look at addition first. So I'm gonna comment out everything else and we'll go line by line. All right, so let's run this block of code. Let's enter the first number as 12. Let's enter the second number as six. So the sum in this case is gonna be 18. In this case, we're stating a variable num1 or number one and we're saying it's gonna be the integer of the input of the first number that we input in that input box. Num two is going to be the integer of the second number we put in, which was six, and six plus 12 plus six is equal to 18. All right, perfect. Let me comment this out, comment this out. Let me take away these comments. Let's run this block of code again. Let's do 12 and six again, and we get the difference here is six, as you see, we have a, uh, a variable called difference result. We're taking num1 minus sign num2, and now we're getting the difference result. Now, let me go back to number one, actually, to show you guys something interesting. So let me uncomment these out. Now, let's say I don't make these integers. Now, let's run this block of code again. What do you think we're gonna get if we do 12 and six? Are we gonna get 18 or are we going to get 126 pause the video and let me know all righty let's do it we actually get 126 and the reason we get that is because these are not being inputted as integers so these are actually strings and as i said before the addition operator if you have two strings is just going to concatenate them together so in this case we have 12 and we're just tacking that six on to the end let's undo this here go back Alrighty, let's move on to multiplication. So let's uncomment these out. Let's run this cell again. Let's do 12 and six again. Now we're doing the same thing. We're storing num1 times num2 inside of a variable. Now in this case, if we didn't wanna hold it in a variable, we can just copy this, cut this into the print statement, and that should give us the same result. So let's try that, just so you guys can see. We'll run this, run this, 12, six and we get 72. Undo this just because it's cleaner to hold it within a variable, uncomment that out. Now let's do the exponents. So let's run this cell again. We're gonna get the input box here. We're doing um, num one, remember it's two star signs here guys to do exponents. So we're gonna do, uh, let's do 12 and two, 144. Okay, good. Let's undo everything out comment those out. All right, let's move on to modulus. So this is probably one that you guys are wondering about. So let's run this cell again. So num1, we're going to be inputting num2, we're going to be inputting. Now this modulus sign is going to get us the remainder. So let's do some tests here. Let's do 12 as our first number. And let's do six as our second number. What do you think the modulus is going to be? The modulus is going to be zero in this case, because there's no remainder. Now let's run this again. Let's do 12 and let's do five. The modulus will be two because five goes into 12 two times at the number 10 and then it has a two as the remainder. Some simple use cases that can kind of help you understand where modulus might be useful. For example, if you wanna find whether a number is even or odd, you can use a modulus to determine if that number is even or odd. Let's say you have a list of items and you wanna figure out which ones are even or which ones are odd. You can get that by using a modulus function. Also, you can use a modulus function to determine time. As you know, our time schedule is on a 12 hour basis. So if we wanna find out what time it is based on, let's say military time, we can use that by finding the modulus of the stated hours as well. All right, let's move on to floor division. So let's comment this out. 
So floor division is going to allow us to divide two numbers and get us the floor. So let's run this. Let's say our first number is 20. Our second number is 7. We're going to get 2 because 7 fits into 20 two times with a remainder of 6, even though it's probably like seven po or 2.7 or 2.8, it's going to round up around down to two. So in this case, it's going to round whatever number you get. It's going to round it down to that next number. Alrighty, guys, let's move on to assignment operators. Let's jump back into the PowerPoint now. So let's do that. Alrighty, guys, assignment operators. So these are the assignment operators inside of Python. The equal sign allows us to set a value equal to a number or a string or something. So our, it allows to set a variable equal to a string. So X equals five means that X is going to be equal to five. Now there is another operator that we'll go over next that will get us, that'll be something different, but just know that one equal sign is, you means you're setting a value to a specific, you're setting a variable to a specific value. You're setting something to a specific value. The plus equals, so if we do X plus equals three, that means it's gonna be whatever X is plus three. Uh, minus equals is going to be the same thing. So X minus equals three, it's just going to be X minus three times equals the same thing times whatever uh, your variable is divide equals is going to be the same modulus equals is just going to be a shorter way of writing the modulus of X modulus three or whatever number you decide to put the equal sign. The floor is going to be the same and the exponent is going to be the same. So let's go over some of the examples in the notebook. Typically, it's a little bit easier to look at certain things. So let's do them here. So let's say our score is 10. If you do score plus equals five, you're going to get 15 because that's going to add whatever the variable is plus equals five instead of just having to do uh, score plus five equals score. In this case, you're just now reassigning score to be plus equals five. So if we do score minus equals, equals three, we're just taking whatever the value in the score is, which is 10, we're minusing it by three, and now score will equal that value. Score multiply equals two, we're just taking score again, and multiplying it by two, and now score will be that value. And then score divide equals four, we're taking this, dividing it by four, and now score is going to equal that. So let's print this and run it. So we get 15, 12, we get 24, then we get 6.0. Now, the reason why these are changing, at this point, score is equal to 10. Now, score is equal to, I'm gonna hashtag here, 15. So we're gonna do 15 minus equals three. So now the score is going to equal to 12. And if we go down here, we're gonna do 12 times two. Now the score is gonna equal 24. And if we go down here, now the score is gonna equal six, right? So that's easy. Now let's divide, let's, X everything out and let's do another example here so I can show you guys. So instead of doing, if I have score equals 20, I can do score is equal to 20. Score is equal to score plus five. Let's run score. Print score. Let's run this. We're going to get 25. It's a lot easier in this case, to just write score plus equals five, let's print score. And now we still get 25. Divide all these out. All right, bringing it back over to this, let's restart the kernel, clear the output. So those are the assignment operators, guys. Pretty useful, uh, easy way to shortcut and backhand your code so you make it a little bit more readable, less fluff. Uh, if you get these and grasp these are very useful when writing code. When you have a lot of code, it's a lot easier to condense variables and numbers like this. And instead of just putting uh, five here, you can also just write another variable here. Uh, let's say I want to write um, score two equals five. Let's delete all this out. So I can just do score plus equals score two and we're gonna get 15. So let's run this, we're getting 15. Awesome, and instead of doing this, let's close that out. 
close that out and let's do score score two let's run that so we get this and if we change this to 10 now it's going to update as well we're going to get 20 all right perfect let's undo everything here all right so now we went through the assignment operators, guys. Let's hop back into the PowerPoint and go over the comparison operator. So gonna play from the current slide. Alrighty, so the comparison operators, this is what I was talking about. So if you have one equal sign, that basically means that you're assigning a value. But if you have two equal signs, you're saying that this, you're asking Python, is this equal to this? Is this equal to this? Um, and it'll return either true or false. The same thing is going to go for here. Uh, exclamation point equals means not equal. So is X not equal to Y? It's going to return a true or false. Greater than sign is going to be greater than is one greater than another. Less than is one less than another. Is one greater than or equal to another. Is one less than or equal to another. Pretty self-explanatory for these operators. Just remember this exclamation point means not equal. Let's jump back into the Jupyter Notebook and go over some of this. Okay, guys, we're back in the Jupyter Notebook. Let's look at the comparison operators now. So in this case, we're going to have a number here, and we're going to input a number. Now let's look through the code. So we have is greater than 10, and we're saying is the number greater than 10. We're storing that in a variable. Let's comment out the rest so we can take a look at this. All right, let's run the code. So we're saying number is going to be an integer that we put in. So let's put in 20 click enter is number greater than 10 in this case that is true because we entered 20 let's run the code again let's put let's put 2 is the number greater than 10 and that's going to be false because we know that uh, the number we put in was 2 so we're saying that this variable is called is greater than 10 and we're saying that the number is it's we're putting in 2 here so we know that 2 is not greater than 10 so that's going to return a false Let's comment this out. Let's uncomment these out. Let's run the code again. So we're saying is less than 20. So let's put in 10 here. Let's click enter. So it's going to say is the number less than 20. In this case, that's going to be true because we put in 10. And basically, this variable is, is less than 20 is comparing the number to 20. We can change this to whatever we want. If we want this to say hello. Remember variables, you can name them whatever you want. So let's change this to hello. Click run. And we know that is the number less than 20. That's true because we entered two. Let's undo this. All right, equals two. So we're saying, are these numbers equal to each other? So it's gonna check the number and see if it's equal to each other. So let's run this code again. We're saying is equal to 15. So if we put in 15, click enter, we know that this is true. Now, remember, if we leave one equal sign, so if we're saying is equal to 15, number is equal to 15, let's run this, let's do one, we're gonna get, we're gonna get 15 as the number. And the reason we're gonna get 15 is, instead of a true or false, is because we did not assign two equal sign here to check to see if it's equal uh, to 15. So let's run this again, let's do one again, and we're gonna get false, so remember, one equal sign means you're setting a value to a specific number or variable. In this instance, two equal signs is gonna make sure that we're checking to see if the variable is equal to the number or other variable. Let's take a look at the last lines of code. All right, let's try this again. So let's do 10 as our first number, one is our second number. We're storing two variables in this case, so we're saying number is our first input, number two is our second input, and we're saying in a variable, our number is equal, and we're comparing number two, or number number to number two to, from our inputs, and we're, we're using this condition comparison operator to say, are they equal to each other? In this case, they are not, so we get the false. Let's run this again. Let's do 10 and 10, and we're going to get two since both of these variables are, in fact, equal to each other. Um, the numbers inside of the variable are equal to each other. So that's that. Let me undo everything. All right. Let's actually do one more comparison operator. So let's do, um, let's, let's do number. Let's do variable. 
equals 10 variable 2 equals 12 and let's do variable compare is equal to variable 1 variable not equals variable 2 and in this case we should get false let's run the code by doing a print statement so print variable compare click let's delete this out for now let's run this we're going to get true because 10 is not equal to 12 so we'll get a true statement now if we change this to 10 and we run it we're going to get a false statement because in this variable we're saying is the first variable not equal to the second variable and in this case they are both the same so we know that they are equal so this not function so this not operator is going to return a false all right let's hop back into the workbook and let's look at conditional operators or logical operators so inside of python we have three different types of logical operators that work on top of if statements in this case and in this uh lesson where we haven't been over conditionals yet but let's just take this for what it is we have the and operator which returns true if both statements are true we have the or operator which returns if one statement is true and we have the not operator which reverses the result and returns if the result is true so we're saying whatever it is not it's the opposite. So if it's true, then it's false as the output. If it's false, then it's actually true. Let's look into the Jupyter Notebook. Alrighty, let's take a look at some logical operators here. So in exercise number four, we have an age input. So we're going to input our age. We're going to input our age and it's going to go to an eligible to vote or not. So we know that if our age is greater than or equal to 18, we are eligible to vote. And we know that if our age is greater than or equal to 13, then that means we're a teenager and we also have to be less than or equal to 19. In this case, we're gonna have another statement that says, is a teenager or, or eligible to vote? So we're gonna compare, are we a teenager from this variable or are we eligible to vote from this variable? And we're gonna output a true or false if we're a teenager or eligible to vote. Now let's give it a go. So let's click run. Our age is going to be, let's do 17. And we're going to get false in this case for eligible to vote. We'll get true in the case that we're a teenager. And it's going to ask, are we a teenager or are we eligible to vote? And we'll get true. Now if we change this out to and, as you can imagine, let's run this again. Let's restart the kernel. Run this again, let's do 17. Are we eligible to vote? No, because we're under the age of 18. Are we a teenager? And in this case, it's gonna be true because we're 17 and this should say and, so let's change this. Let's run this again. Let's run this again, 17. So in this case, it's going to say, are we eligible to vote? No. False. Are you a teenager? Yes. Are you a teenager and eligible to vote? In this case, it's going to be false since we're 17. Let's restart the kernel. Let's run this again. All right. So let's say we are 20. Click enter. Are we eligible to vote? That's true. Are we a teenager? That's false. Are you a teenager and eligible to vote? That's false. Because one of these is false, that means that this statement here is going to be false. And if it's an or statement, that we know that if there's at least one true, then that means that it will be true. But in this case, it's an and, so both have to be true. Now, let me run this again. Show you another scenario. Let's run this again. Let's do 19. In this case, 19 is going to be true for everything. So 
are we eligible to vote? It's true. Are we a teenager? That's true. And since we're both a teenager and we're eligible to vote, that will return a true. So remember, with the or operator, one of the statements have to be true. With the and operator, both statements have to be true. Now, let's cut this out for a second. Let's take a look at this. Let's restart the kernel. Let's run this block of code. So we're saying number. Is the number positive and odd? So we're saying if the number is greater than zero and the number modulus two is not equal to zero, then it's odd. So we're saying if it's greater than zero in this case, we know that it's gonna be positive and the number does not ha does not equal to zero. The modulus two does not equal to zero, which means that if it's uh, divided by two is the remainder not equal to zero. Uh, in this case, let's put a number like five in. We know that five is greater than zero and we know five modulus two has a value of one because two only goes into five two times with the remainder of one. So we know that these are this is gonna be true. So we know that the number is five and we know that the number is positive and odd. So it'll be true. Now let's run this again. So let's put four in here, click enter, and it's gonna be false even though we know that four is greater than zero in this case, but we know that four modulus two is going to equal zero since two goes into four. Uh, and in this case, it is not odd as four is not odd. Alrighty guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on operators. There are a bunch of different operators within Python. As you guys can see here, when we go back to the PowerPoint, there's more operators that we can go through that might be useful later on in this course. But from this, in this case, uh, we're only going to look at the operators that I gave you guys today. There's also identity operators and is and is not. These identify if, if, the, if the variable comes from the same object. We also have membership operators, in and not in. And we also have bite-wise operators. But in this course, we're probably not going to get into much of this until the last module. Uh, but in this course, just worry about the operators that we went through today. So... As always, we went through the operators, how to use the operators. We wrote some applications of operators in the Python Jupyter Notebook. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful in your learning journey for Python. I'll catch you guys on the next video where we're going to be getting into lists and tuples. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care and have a great day.